going to show you how to today how to uh, well not today in this little segment here because I, I fill up a whole tape and then I carry on anyways I'm off to topic when you're making a little building or a, a building like this and you you decided that you know rather than sticking on the walls okay because sometimes having things all uh, what do they call it contiguous you know where it's all one piece rather than sticking it, it's a little bit tougher okay so in this case I'm doing a little 15 mil little building okay all right and, and the, the wall here along the balcony well I didn't want to stick that on there because I've carved it really thin it's maybe oh, 3 16th uh, 2 mils 2 maybe 3 mils thick the wall so um, it, it'll be fairly tough once it's scooped and stuff okay but to cut that out, you know, I've cut that out like this and then I just kind of chipped it away with my, you know, knife as best I could. And then I kind of sanded this down as best, you know, as, as, as well as I could. Uh, the pink kind of pills a little bit, you know, the blue does it worse for me. But I want this floor to be nice. I want this to look like, you know, like slate or something or, uh, you know, like tiles. Okay. So how I do that is... You can either, well, there's two ways, okay? I'll show you on this piece here, because I've already gooped it. Okay, here's the same sort of effect here. Now, I could take little pieces of cardboard, like cereal box, okay, and cut squares so that they're all nice, same squares, and glue those down on there, okay? Then when they're painted, it, well, they're, they're actual little tiles, hey? Tiles can be cardboard. It would look just as, just, just as well. Oh, man, I'm stuttering today. Anyways, where are we? Here we are. Okay. Uh, what I like doing sometimes is is pouring plaster of Paris in there, okay? which is what I'm going to do today. Okay. I could probably do both, but I mean, hey, you know how to stick little cardboard squares on there. So I rather than painting detail, a lot of people paint their detail on, which is which is fine. I mean, I I I'm envious of it. Uh, I'm a lazy guy. Spider web in there. I'm a lazy guy, so I, I like doing it uh, so that it's, you know, done, hey? And I don't want to have to add the... So what I intend to do is I build the detail in rather than painting it on, okay? Either way is good. If you're good at painting, you know, you can, you know, you can paint your windows and stuff like that, and they, they, look, they look just fine. I, I always build my little windows, okay? So it depends on what you're doing. Uh, so I'm just going to pour a little bit of plaster in here, basically. So you can use clean water. What I end up doing is all, quite often is, you know, the the water that I've used for washing my paintbrushes off, it's usually kind of a gray or a blackish color because I use a lot of gray or black. Okay. Hey, that dyes your uh, uh, plaster. So uh, bear with me for a minute. Notice <laughs> in my videos here, Boy, I got a real Elvis lip, eh? Holy smokes. I don't know why I do that. Oh well. One of my quirks. So, take a stick. Notice you add the plaster to the water, eh? Don't add it the other way. Doesn't seem to work for some reason. Plus you end up adding too much water when you do it that way, but... So, Depending on how lazy you are and how much, you know, you can pour it thick or you can pour it thin. If you do it thin, uh, you have to, you know, pretty much let it sit over, well, not overnight. You, you, you want to be able to carve your uh, tiles into it with a soft toothpick or, you know, my modeling tool or something while it's still just a little bit damp. Okay, so this, this is all set up nice. So I'm going to pour the, both of those, okay? Usually I goop it first just because I don't want goop onto my tiles because normally, like I said, I add a little bit of paint to it so that it comes out, you know, that color. So make sure you have it on a flat surface and just, you know, pour it in. Uh, air bubbles, hey, that's, that's kind of a, a problem with this stuff. That's like uh, one reason why you stir it, okay? And if you stir it gently, you know, like I just used a little stick, right, and stirred it gently, you get very little air bubbles. If you shake it or if you go, well, you got air bubbles in there and, and uh, they're going to show, okay? Now you can take a pin 
and as the air bubbles come up, you know, it, it, don't start right away. Hey, wait, wait a second or two, and you know they'll come up, uh, vibrate it just slightly, uh, you know, and you'll see the bubbles there, and you can pop them with your pin, okay? And as long as you do that, then you won't have a little void there. Otherwise, you'll have a hole, okay? So after I've poured it, I uh, sorry, I can't can't really see, but after I poured it, I tap it just slightly. So here, let me pour this one before this stuff sets. That's the other thing is don't don't uh, be like me and get off on a tangent when you're doing this because next thing you know you got a solid container full of plaster. Okay, the tapping on it also drives it into the corners of the the, the floor for you. So I've got one little air bubble on there, and of course I don't have a pin, so improvise. That's all you have to do. And then we'll let this set a bit, and then I'll, well, you just carve in there with your pencil, eh? Pencil or, uh, like I said, you know, make yourself a little carving type tool, a eh? Modeling tool, and then you can draw in your lines. And they don't have to be squares, okay? That's the other thing. Uh, you know, they, they don't have to be square tiles. You can do, like, little diamondy patterns. You can just, you know, haphazardly, you know, make little tiles like you know like it was all done out of broken tiles hey eh? either way is effective another tip on these model thingies that I, I carve out uh, put some pencil line markings on them or some like take a red felt or blue felt or crayon or gob of paint on them because otherwise if you got whole <laughs> if you're disorganized like me and you got wood bits all over the flipping place you'll lose your tools hey eh? unless they're colored so I'll let this dry up just here. Before I go here, of course, hey, I've got just a little bit of plaster in here and being somewhat Scottish, I don't like waste and stuff like that, hey? So here's a, I don't know, some sort of weird flange. You know, push it into a piece of, uh, what the hell is this stuff called? I can't believe I do that, you know? Push it into a piece of plaster seam. That's what it is, plaster seam. Modeling clay. Uh, Okay, and then just dump your uh, excess in into that. Now, and then when you're building rubble piles or a bomb building or something, you can stick these onto the you know into the room, and it'll look like some piece of machinery that's buried underneath a pile of stuff. At least that way you don't waste your last little teaspoon of this plaster. Of course, I got a little bit extra. Extra. Oh. That's why you have a couple. Remember when I was saying in my casting things, you know, have a couple different things that you can cast. So, what else can we do with the excess? Oh, I need some. Actually, on our little piece here that we're building here, between the little tile that I stuck in there. Yeah, we'll just taper off that a little bit. So we'll just bang the excess in here. Could If I had a building, I could have painted it on a building. Add a little bit of white glue to it, and then it's really tough stuff too. Eh? This will work. That way I can carve on this and make it look like broken tiles in the background. See? Uh. Don't want it to pour it all out. <laughs> 